Hi and welcome to Our Small Table. Today we're making a special occasion meal, maybe a Valentine's dinner for two. It's pomegranate honey Cornish game hens. Here's our finished dish. Let's see how we got here. This first step is optional and it's the brining. Cornish game hens generally stay pretty juicy because they don't cook for very long, but I do like to brine my poultry when I'm cooking it whole, when I'm roasting it, and so I'm going to go ahead and do it. You can use for your liquid broth or water or a combination of both. I'm using a combination because I had some chicken broth left over that I'm not going to use, and so instead of having to toss it, I'm just going to use it in this case and meet the rest of the total by adding water to it. You can brine directly in a large pot or bowl, but sometimes the salt can affect the metal depending on what kind of metal you're using, if it's reactive or not. And so I like to do it inside of a bag. I have some very large zip top bags. You can also buy brining bags at the store. And in my market, they're available year round. I'm using kosher salt, I always use kosher salt for a brine and sugar. And I need to refill my water, which I'm going to do off camera. So I shall return shortly. And here's the last of the water going in. Brines that are more complicated and that are meant to impart flavor, which have seasonings and things, generally have to be boiled before you add the meat. This is a very simple brine and the entire purpose is to help the birds retain moisture so they can go in as they are. And just very simply add the birds to the brine. Get all the air out of the cavity as they sink. Make sure that they are completely below the level of your liquid. And this is going to go into the fridge sealed for no more than two hours. At which point we'll be back to get them roasted. The brine has been completed and both birds have also been rinsed off so the brine has been completely taken off of it. Can't get the camera over to the sink so I have to, you have to take my word for that. Um, we also importantly got to make sure that there's no brine left inside the cavity so rinse it all the way through and make sure that it's all that broth and salt and sugar have been washed off of them. The next step is our pomegranate honey which is just pomegranate juice and honey. I actually used real pomegranate seeds. I seeded a pomegranate and then took the seeds and pressed them with the back of a spoon through a sieve to get the juice. And I'm very happy with my result, but that is a time-consuming and messy pro process. And so you can feel free to use just regular store-bought pomegranate juice if you prefer and if it's available. I did have to adjust the amounts a little bit. The first flavoring was fine, but it still tasted a little bit too much just like plain honey to me. And so I've added more pomegranate juice until it's the flavor that I really like. So work with a little bit. Add some pomegranate juice based on what's in the recipe, taste it, and then add more if you feel that you need it. I'm going to go ahead and tie the legs on both birds. The oven has preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not the center. There's the center. We want to get a nice little close package. And we're actually going to cook these breast side down for the first half an hour 
so that the juices run into the breast. And then we'll flip it. Get these strings out of the way here a little bit. I'm just going to glaze with the pomegranate honey all over the bird. Getting into the crevices as much as possible. And now we'll flip it over. And do the other side. This is going to roast for a total of an hour but we're going to reglaze it every 15 minutes. And at the 30 minute point, which is the halfway point, so on the second glaze, then we'll flip the birds over. Get those wings underneath, and I will go ahead and glaze the other one, and we'll get it in the oven, and then I shall return. It's been 30 minutes, so I've already done one reglazing at the 15 minute point, and I'm adding some more glaze now. Every time that you take it out, you want to rotate the pan in the oven so that the bird that was in the back is now in the front and vice versa. The reason that I'm demonstrating this time is that this is where we're going to turn over the birds. Carefully, so that I don't burn myself. And equally carefully, try and tuck these wings underneath without touching any of the parts of the roasting pan because that's where you'll burn yourself. And I'm going to take care of the other one off camera that's going to go back into the oven. In another 15 minutes it will get glazed again and then it'll come out of the oven 15 minutes after that. That'll be the total hour and I'll be back then. These have come out of the oven and got to let them rest and while doing so I'm reducing the remaining pomegranate honey in a small saucepan on the stove over medium high heat to be used as a sauce. So I'll just release these legs from each other and discard the string and that way nobody has to worry about finding it in a bite on their plate. And when that sauce is reduced and these have rested a little bit, we'll come back and plate her up. Now that everything is rested, we'll go ahead and put our bird onto the plate. I'm using rice in this case but couscous would be another good option. And some of that reduced sauce over the top. And then just to make it look nice, get a little pop of that deep jewel color and a little extra flavor of the pomegranate. Put a couple of pomegranate seeds on it and maybe a little bit of a garnish. There! Thanks for joining me today at Our Small Table. The recipe I've used is linked in the video description and is available at OurSmallTable.com. 
next time we're making marbled mint brownies. Click subscribe so you don't miss out.